the nitty gritty dirt band. <laughs> Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right of me.
She won two counties west of a river not too far from here called the Susquehanna that divides our state, one third east and two thirds west. She carried two counties west of the Susquehanna. Center County that's spelled with that awkward R-E <laughs> instead of E-R. Translation, Penn State. And Allegheny County translation, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. It's a politician who's been dead 15 years. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is that we've had now eight, eight American presidents who started out in the business community in one way or another, and then they turn to politics. Harry Truman, by the way, professional historian, rate him among all those business types as by far the best. The Truman Doctrine, how he handled a whole bunch of things. He turned out to be a very, very superb, uh, superb president. We've had eight generals who, 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 have been, who have been president. Most presidents have, have been career politicians or lawyers or, or some combination of both. We had one actor, <laughs> Ronald Reagan, of course, he was also the governor of California for two terms. And we had a college professor, Wood Woodrow Wilson. So it's not that getting a business person is so odd or different, but that one of the differences is that Trump was the first individual elected to the presidency who never held a political office or a full-time governmental office. The second thing about Trump is he probably has one of the most unique personalities. Uh, you notice how adept I was in saying that. In fact, when you think about it, I thought during the campaign, and I've been doing this for a long time, writing a lot about American history and American politics, and I thought when he was running the campaign, what an actor this dude is. It's straight out of the apprentice. He's playing a game. When he gets, if he wins the presidency, he's going to be different. I could have never been more wrong about anything. What we see is the real Donald Trump. Now, I want to talk about this for a minute. We have a very difficult situation with immigration, as everybody in this room knows. Donald Trump has been inconsistent in what he has said, but during the campaign, he spoke very harshly about, at some points, literally kicking 11 to 12 million people who are here illegally out of the country. No one in their right mind can believe that, can believe that's possible. And he has vacillated on that. Now they're going after the criminal illegal immigrants who are here, you got it? The fact of the matter is that one of the reasons that he got elected, and this people find hard to believe, is the white working class voters are opposed to immigration, strongly opposed to immigration. And some argue they're racist, but you know what else goes on? These are the people they believe that are taking their low-paying, minimum-wage jobs. Follow this? And that's incredibly important, important to those and to those voters. Overall, I think maybe, and I joke about this, maybe Trump needs to stay in Europe where he does a better job, you know, of communicating with what he wants to do than when he gets here at home when he doesn't do such a great job. The other point, I want to go through a couple of other points and then we can do whatever questions you want. Let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about something else. As you know, this week a Democrat introduced a resolution to impeaching. And let's talk about this. Impeachment. Two presidents out of 45 have been impeached. What does that mean? It means the House of Representatives, by a majority vote, but has, has said, and they have the sole power to impeach, that they, they impeach the power of the president for bribery or other high crimes or misdemeanors. That's what the Constitution says in Article 2. They impeached a guy named Andrew Johnson who succeeded Abraham Lincoln because the Congress had passed a law that said you can't remove a cabinet officer without their approval. It's called the Tenure of Office Act. He said they all of you. And he did it. And they impeached him, but they didn't convict him. Nixon was about to be impeached in the House when he resigned for the cover-up in Watergate. The other American president, only two were impeached, was Bill Clinton, as I mentioned before, for lying in a civil trial. 
So here's the point. It takes two thirds to convict in the Senate. The Republicans have, depending on the week we're in, 230, 231 members in the House. You got it? They control the House. What in the world are Senator and House members thinking of in, in introducing impeachment resolutions? I, I have an answer. When there's no chance that he's going to get impeached, or in fact that he's that the Senate would even convict where there's a trial. Bill Clinton, by the way, the House impeached him, but the, the Senate didn't convict him and he went through his presidency. But there's something else, and I don't want to belabor this, and it has to do with something called the 25th Amendment. If a president is unable to serve, and that often is called, talked about in the form of a disability, it doesn't mean just physical disability, a, the cabinet, the vice president and a majority of the cabinet can say the vice president is now president. They literally can remove him from the presidency. The House and the Senate can put the president back. Follow me? And then we go on from there. But Mike Pence is going to lead a charge to get the president some idiosyncrasy. You follow me? Some scandal that strikes the you know, the administration in some respect. And lots of administrations have had scandals. It hasn't personally affected the president. I don't think it's just going to be on issues of the day. You know what I mean? What he says, build a wall, make America great. These are things that, you know, his core supporters. And I don't think it would, it comes to the kids. You know, this is very unusual to have. And it, it, it seems to me that, that, you know, I don't think the Trump Jr. thing, for example, and we can, we can get into that, I'll try to avoid it if I can, but I think it was immature, I think it was uh, silly what he did, I think it was another business guy who thinks he can get into a room and you do what, what happened in that meeting and then it wouldn't matter. It was almost childish and it does show you how they, is, they have no political sense about them. And by the way, it was wrong on virtually every level, but it wasn't illegal, and it's not treason, and it didn't violate the state, the country's election laws. That's something I've studied over the years. But it, it was incredibly dumb, and they may pay a price for that politically. We haven't seen polls yet since all of this began, so we'll have to see if that causes some support. So I think it's probably something that Trump has to do himself. Uh, it, it certainly doesn't even going to be tweeted because he seems to tweet some things that we all go, did he really just say that? You know, he got a better way of it.